Good morning. My name is Matt, and we'd like to welcome you to worship with us here at Hope. Uh, whether you are watching us online this week or whether you are here with us in the sanctuary, we have so many things going on in the life of the church right now. Uh, we have Crop Walk coming up in a couple of weeks, and so you can be involved in Crop Walk either by participating yourself or by sponsoring somebody else. We have sign-ups for our holiday bake sale coming up the beginning of November, so please join us for that. This is the last Sunday also to sign up for Dinner for Eight if you'd like to participate in that. Um, now that COVID is at a low level, again, finally, I'm interested in getting singers together for Hope Choir. So please let me know, <laughs> got a couple right there maybe, um, if you'd like to join us. And I can email the existing list I have from pre-COVID days, but please let me know if you'd like to join. Uh, Linda Sack is starting Bell Choir, and so she has room for a couple more ringers, I think. If anybody would like to uh, bing, be a ringer, <laughs> just talk with Linda. Uh, Pastor Mary has some words for us, I think, about our order of worship this morning. Just one thing, um, again, with COVID being a little bit lower, not gone all the way, but lower, um, we are adding some, at least in, in this service, one part back that I think you've all been missing. We're adding back the, the p passing of the peace or sharing the peace. Um, now, everybody at first service laughed at me when I said this, but we're going to we're asking to do it non-contact. See? <laughs> so I guess what I'm saying is um, some people may not want to be contacted, so just respect that and do what's comfortable for you. So it'll be um, after the prayers of the people, so I don't think it's exactly where it used to be for you, but it is in the order of Lutheran worship, so <laughs> it's... Um, it's in its proper place. So um, just so you know, when we get to that, and um, we'll just see how it goes. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Pastor Mary. And now please stand, if you'd like, and join us in our opening song, Forever. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong. Forever God is with us, forever and ever, forever. From the rising to the setting sun, His love endures forever. By the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever and ever. Forever God is faithful, forever. 
forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever and ever. Forever. See light, hope, and joy. We share blessings and fears. With all that we are and all that we have, let us worship God. God's love, steadfast love, is everlasting, and God's faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, we acknowledge the sin and brokenness in us and around us. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we li live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of grace and mercy, we have peace with God through Christ. Our sins are forgiven. Let us, now, let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Hey, 
good morning. I'd like to invite my friends to come on up with me. And you know, if you don't feel like it, that's fine too. And I can just talk to you right here, however you want to do it. <laughs> this is perfect, Kate. This is perfect. You are here. We're here. It's great. Thank you for sitting up here with me. So if I were to look around and ask, who has faith? I bet there some of you would raise your hand up right away, right? Yes, I have faith. You're confident. You know. Some of you might kind of look around and realize, oh, I should raise my hand. I'm at church. Everyone else is raising their hand. Have you ever been like that? You know, yes, that even happens here at church. We feel a little peer pressure. And maybe some of you are like, maybe I have faith. I'm not so sure. And maybe some of you are just pretty like, nope, not today. Well, I think that, well, I don't just think it, but I know that faith is a gift. And wherever you are on that spectrum, whether you raise your hand proudly, confidently, yes, I have faith, or even are able to be honest and say, I don't have it today, I think every spot of that spectrum is a sign of faith because faith is a gift. It comes from God. And um, I'm sorry, I'm so distracted because the doors are open and keeps catching my eye and I lose my thought. <laughs> But you know, I have faith I can get through this. I hope, I think you have faith in me too. So today Jesus is talking about faith in the gospel. And what he says, he talks about faith as the size of a mustard seed. So like I said, it's perfect. It's me and you. Some people might look up here and be like, well, that's not very many kids. Where's all the kids? Or that's not very many people. But I know that this is not the full picture of our congregation. I know that this is not the full picture of all of our families and children and youth who are here who have faith. They just live out their faith maybe in different places, in different ways, and it's not about the size or the amount that matters, because that's what Jesus is talking about today. It's what Jesus can do, what God can do with faith no matter what the size. So remember earlier I was talking about whether today you're raising your hand up, strong, yes, I have faith, or maybe today you're like, no, I don't. By the way, it's always a spectrum. Some days you might wake up like that, you know? And some days you might wake up ready. You know that you have faith. Some days you're not so sure. But either way, it's all in God's hands, and God is the one who's going to work through that. So what is faith? Do you have any ideas? Does anyone have a definition? We talk about faith a lot. Yeah? Yeah? It's a belief in things unseen. Trust, is that what I heard? Yeah? Unseen or unknown. So think about that. If it's unseen or unknown, no wonder some days we might be able to be like, yes, I have faith, and some days maybe you're not so sure because we're dealing with things that we don't always fully comprehend and know. But it does have to do with God more than anything, and this is a gift from God. And... So I've asked, who has faith? And I didn't really want to test you because I think there's some peer pressure around that when we're at church. Sometimes you feel like you have to have faith and prove you have faith and a lot of faith. And if you don't, then somehow maybe you're not Christian enough. I just really disagree with that. <laughs> so I didn't want to do that, but it's good to think about it. What is faith? Because we talk about it a lot. We don't always know what it is. But faith is a gift, and faith is for our neighbor. A lot of times we talk about faith being for ourselves. We focus on faith that is mine. Maybe faith so that then I can go to heaven when I die. Maybe faith so I can feel secure and good about myself. But this faith is a gift from God. It has not very much to do with us at all other than to say yes, receive and respond to our daily lives and share the love of God in the world. So maybe today we can think about that. Instead of getting so focused on the amount, the size, maybe how grandiose it might seem, how loud and proud you can stand up in faith, maybe think about how is God, how is faith with you, even in those darkest places when you feel like there's nothing there with you? How is God giving you that gift of faith to keep showing up, even if you feel like you're the only one, and keep going and helping you to be there and see your neighbor, to love and care for them? That's what faith's about. 
So thanks for hanging in there with me as I got back here into the message. And I just hope we can continue to have faith in each other and faith in our God, that God is with us in our midst, no matter what it might look like, no matter what we see or don't see, that God is here. Amen. We don't need that one on, too. <clears throat> Our gospel reading this morning is from the 17th chapter of Luke. And I'm going to put my glasses on so I can actually see it. Aha. Uh-huh. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? And later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you you were ordered to do, say we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. This is the gospel of our Lord. So for the last few weeks on Thursday mornings, there's a group of us that gathers at, what time do we gather? 10 (laughs) o'clock, 10 o'clock, to do some Bible study. And what we've been studying for the last few weeks is a very tiny passage in the book of Philippians where St. Paul says to us, be anxious for nothing. And we have a lot of good discussion around that. For such a small passage, we talk about a lot of things that have to do with anxiety and how we we deal with it. So it seems these days there's, there's a lot going on that might make us feel, for one reason or another, a bit weary, anxious, or sad. There are so many things happening in our world, our nation, and even our own backyards, and sometimes our own lives that might make us feel anxious and fearful. Now, we've all been watching the news, I'm sure, or at least seen pictures of Florida. Can you even imagine what it's like living parts, in parts of Florida right now? There are so many people that have been affected, and now it's going up the East Coast. So many people affected by Hurricane Ian. And even though they knew it was coming and that it was going to be a dangerous storm, no no one could imagine the damage it would leave behind. I've heard so many people say, I've seen so many storms, but nothing like this. Entire communities have literally been blown or washed away. Lives have been lost and so many others displaced. And likewise, we're also aware of the ongoing unprovoked war in Ukraine that's been going on for months. Bombed out cities and senseless loss of lives. Thousands of people displaced, again, with nowhere to go. A nation has lost its sense of security, but not its sense of unity. And as we watch all of these things unfold on the other side of the country and the other side of the world, we might feel a sense of relief that those things don't happen here. It is good that Idaho does not have hurricanes. Yeah, and hardly any tornadoes ever, from what I understand. It's probably not impossible, but anyway. So we might feel a sense of relief that those things don't happen here. Yet at the same time, we're aware of our own personal struggles and losses. Just last night, I learned of the death of a friend who was shot by his own mother. I mean, there's, there's no words, but it hurts. 
But honestly, all the losses and struggles is part of being a human being. And it's all relative. We can look at our own lives and see that someone else might have it a lot worse than we do. And while that's true, if it's happening to you, it's affecting your life and it's significant enough. But do you ever wonder why all this awful stuff goes on in our world and in our own lives? Do you wonder where God is in all of this? Do you wonder why God allows it to happen? Do you wonder why bad things happen to good people? Well, that is a question as old as time. And sometimes God seems absent and at best, passive. Yet, we are reminded over and over and over again that we should not lose our faith and that God always remains faithful to his promises. And as people of God struggling to understand and cope with all the ways, or all the whys and the wheres, we are encouraged to hold fast to the faith that we have. Now, faith can be a pretty precarious thing. I mean, what exactly is faith? As Casey asked, it was a great question. And what are we holding on to our faith for? What are we hoping for? That there will be no more violence or crime or terrorism or immorality and injustice or there will be no more illness, death or destruction, no more storms that ruin our ruin entire lives i mean we can always hope that these things will cease but the reality is that as long as there are people and as long as people have free will well those things will go on although people don't exactly have anything to do with storms but anyway it just happens and it's going to go on Now, that's not exactly a word of comfort, is it? So somehow we have to believe and trust that God is in the midst of it all, doing good in spite of all the evil and all the wrong, making a positive difference in the midst of all the negative. And that's where we come in. Through God, or excuse me, through us, God is indeed in the midst of it all, doing good in spite of the bad. You see, our faith is not only believing that God is acting, but also that we are acting. Now we might ask, where is God right now as parts of the East Coast are literally blown or washed away? And where is God when... Ukraine was invaded and innocent people were killed or left home. Where was God when my friend Chris's mother pointed the gun at him? Where was God? Where is God when we lose someone we love or find ourselves in difficult circumstances? Well, God is exactly where we need him. God is in every rescue worker, fireman, or police officer. God is in every volunteer who helps bring people to safety or brings food and drink to those who are doing some hard work. God is with us in every person who offers us a word or deed of hope and love. God is there. God is here and very active. But it does take eyes of faith to see that. Now perhaps we wish that we had faith enough to risk our lives to help someone else, that we even had faith enough to really let God be God and in charge of every aspect of our lives. But you know what, we can't quantify faith. You can't measure it, you can't take out your ruler and say, Today I have this much and this much today or some days not at all. We can't measure it exactly. It's what you do with it that really counts. 
It's not necessarily great big things that show how much faith a person has, but it's also in the small acts of life, the day in and the day out acts of life. Jesus said that faith the size of a mustard seed could move mountains. Well, in our case, it's not mountains that need to be moved. It's just our behinds that need moving. We don't need mountain moving faith. We need just enough faith to get up in the morning, to get dressed, to brush our teeth, comb our hair, and be civilized to the first person who talks to us before our first cup of coffee. I think that must be true for some of you. (laughs) It is for me. We need enough faith to begin our day and end our day with a little talk with our Heavenly Father. We need enough faith to believe that our day belongs to God and not to anyone else, not to the world, not to our boss, and not even to ourselves. We need enough faith to say, this moment of this day, I'm going to do the best to be, the fa- to be a faithful servant of God without losing hope and becoming discouraged. We need to have enough faith to do whatever we are given to do at any particular moment in life. As a pastor, I wish I had the power to increase your faith or even my own, but the truth is that we're simply called to be ourselves, with whatever gifts and talents and treasures that God has given us. Nothing more, nothing less. You are called to live in a unique relationship with God composed of a string of moments of faithfulness. As a child of God, I need a faith that gets me up in the morning believing that God has some promise in store for me today that the Holy Spirit can work through me to make some positive difference in someone's life. I need a faith that helps me believe that when I minister to someone who's hurting, that God is indeed present there with his healing power. And that's what you need too. Just enough faith for one moment, one minute, one hour, Faith to get through whatever may be happening in your life. And all we need is enough faith to do what needs to be done. A life of faith is composed of small acts of faithfulness put together end to end. Now, Jesus doesn't promise us that we're going to have great faith, but that God is faithful to us and grants us enough faith to do what is required of us. And if you think about it, some of the most remarkable people, kind of like a Mother Teresa, never did anything grand, but she did many small acts of love and caring in small and humane ways for people who no one else cared for. She held some, to some she gave a glass of water, and a kind word. It's not much, really, in the grand scheme of things, but small moments of love, of faith, and faithfulness that added up to one who sparkled like a diamond. God is indeed present and active in our world, and he calls you and me in a very real way to be his presence. So how much faith do you have this morning in the midst of all the things that make you weary, anxious, or sad? Do you have enough to hold someone who needs to feel God's arms around them? Do you have enough to give a drink of water to someone who is thirsty? Do you have enough to give a kind word to someone who isn't used to receiving kind words? Enough to give of your own resources so that the good news of Jesus might be spoken to someone on the other side of the world. That's all the faith that God requires of you. And that is the faith that in the end moves the whole world. Amen.
They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing back. I've stood on the stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be all right. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. pray for your holy church in every place and for those who serve following the example of Christ. Help them to live by faith and walk by the light of your gospel. For parts of the world ravaged by natural disaster, especially for those in Florida and the East Coast. Relieve those affected by floods, wildfires, droughts, earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes. For every nation and for those entrusted with authority, grant our leaders self-discipline in all things and inspire them with love for your people. For victims of violence, abuse, and neglect, heal those who have been harmed and protect those who are vulnerable. For all who are sick, we pray, especially for those that we lift up to you now, silently or aloud. For this and every congregation, rekindle your gifts within your people, inspire councils, committees, and individuals to plan and work together that all may know your love. And in thanksgiving that you have abolished death, and for the saints who have died, bring us all to eternal life with you. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all of our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another.
I see you don't enjoy it at all, so. <laughs> so as we proceed with communion in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ invites you to his table. Come, taste, and see. Well, it 
Hear our prayer. We are your children, and we've gathered here today. We've gathered here to pray. Hear our cry. We need your mercy, and we need your grace today. Hear us as we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, hear us from heaven, forgive our sins, we pray. Hear our song as it rises to heaven. May your glory fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. See our hearts and remove anything that is standing in the way of coming to you today our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name our father hear us from heaven forgive our sins we pray Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. God's peace carry, keep, and hold you. God's love nourish, bless, and enfold you. God's spirit inspire, lift, and mold you. Go now, having shared in the gifts of God, to bless others with what they need for the day. Go in peace. Christ is with you. 
We'd like to thank you for worshiping with us here today at Hope. And now, if you're able and would like to stand and join us in our closing song, it is I Walk by Faith. I walk by faith each step by faith to live by faith I put my trust in you I walk by faith each step by faith to live by faith I put my trust in you Every step I take is a step of faith. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every prayer I make is a prayer of faith. If my God is for me, who can be against me? I want each step by faith to live by faith I put my trust in you I walk by faith each step by faith to live by faith I put my trust in you every step I take is a step of faith no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every prayer I make is a prayer of faith if my God is for me who can be against me I walk by faith each step by faith to live by faith I put my trust in you I walk by faith each step by faith to live by faith I put my trust in you experience we discover God and God's will in the world. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.